So it seems like all the great powers say there has to be military action against ISIS on a greater scale. What has happened so far in response to the attacks in Paris? Well, actually, not a lot. I mean, there are a few more airstrikes. Uh, everybody's decided that something has to be done. But at the end of the day, really nothing significant will be done because it's not possible to knock these guys out unless we're willing to commit a large number of troops How on the ground. How many troops do we have to put on the ground? Several hundreds of thousands. And for a long time, this is time sensitive, too. It'll take a decade, two decades. I mean, we're not going to do it. And we can't get the people in the region to do it, even though they have an interest in making well, sure these Why guys can't? Are okay, so if it's several hundred thousand people, uh, obviously it seems like a coalition would be the answer there. So not one country, because so many countries have an interest. And so many countries have been attacked by ISIS at this point. Um, why don't the regional powers there want to do anything about it? Why not Saudi Arabia? Why not Iran? They're at each other's throats. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran are duking it out for domination and influence in the area, so they're not going to coalesce into anything. As a matter of fact, if you, if you throw Turkey into the mix, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Iran, very powerful armed forces, very, very good air forces, so right now, who's bombing Raqqa? The United States and France. There's an argument that says we ought to just shut up and forget about trying to uh, unseat uh, despotic, uh, bloodthirsty despots because in the past they've kept the place together. Well, uh, we certainly were in bed with a lot of bloodthirsty despots for a while, and then we got out of that business mm -hmm. and uh, overthrew Saddam Hussein. Would ISIS exist if Saddam was still in power? Uh, I think not. Uh, I think it's an outgrowth of that. These are Sunni apocalyptic people who are waiting for the, not waiting for the end of the world. They're hurtling toward it, and they want to bring everybody with them. So if, if you had control of our armed forces and our strategy, what should the United States be doing right now to try to destroy ISIS? Because well, one of the things about this, they have nothing to negotiate, right? They're not looking for anything from no, us. No, no, they're not, they're not, no, it's, everything is non-negotiable. They want you to die and they want to die themselves. It's just a matter of time. So how do we give that to them? Well, it, <laughs> we, can, we can do it. Well, there are, there are a couple of things to consider here. The first is you're not going to be able to do it by dropping conventional bombs on people. Mm -hmm. Militarily, the only purpose for bombs is to pave the way for people on the ground to seize and hold terrain long enough to create an environment in which there can be a real government to take out the trash and do all the rest. And we're not doing it, and it takes a quarter of a million people to do it, probably what, just in Syria. Any, any good news, Colonel? <laughs> Well, I stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> Colonel Jack Jacobs. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back.